back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about NSAID, which stands for Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drugs. Before getting to know about them, we need to get familiarized with certain terms. We all know pain and are experiencing it every day in one form or the other. It has got a fancier medical term called algesia, which is defined as an ill-defined, unpleasant sensation, usually evoked by an external or internal noxious stimulus. Drugs given for algesia is termed as analgesics. They selectively relieve pain by acting in the central nervous system or on peripheral pain mechanisms without significantly altering consciousness. Analgesics relieve pain as a symptom without affecting its cause. Moving on to the term pyresis. It refers to fever and antipyretics are the drugs given to treat fever. Inflammation refers to swelling, redness along with fever or increased temperature and pain and the anti-inflammatory drugs suppress inflammation. Certain group of drugs has the ability to deal with all of the above. Yes, they are NSAIDs. Analgesics can be divided into two groups namely opioids and non-opioids. Opioid group of drugs are also known as narcotics, morphine-like analgesics. Non-opioid group of drugs are also known as non-narcotic or antipyretic or aspirin-like analgesics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The major difference between these two groups are NSAIDs don't produce depression of CNS and they do not produce physical dependence and have no abuse liability, while the opioids have all of these. As I told previously, NSAIDs have analgesic, anti-inflammatory and antipyretic actions. Let's get to know the mechanism by which they do so. Prostaglandin G2 is produced from arachidonic acid by an enzyme called cyclooxygenase and various other enzymes such as prostacyclin synthase, thromboxane synthase, lipoxygenase and isomerases are responsible for production of prostacyclin, thromboxane, leukotriene and prostaglandin E2 and I2 respectively. This is just an overview of arachidonic acid pathway just to understand NSAID's mechanism. So, what does NSAID do now? It inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme thereby preventing the further steps of this pathway. This cyclooxygenase enzyme, abbreviated as COX, exists in three forms such as COX-1, 2 and 3. COX-1 is a constitutive enzyme and is produced all the time irrespective of presence of substrate and they serve physiological housekeeping functions like for example gastroprotection. COX-2 on the other hand is an inducible enzyme which is produced only in presence of substrate like cytokines or other signaling molecules at the site of inflammation. However, COX-2 is present at some sites in brain and in juxtaglomerular cells may serve physiological role at these sites. So, which NSAID inhibit which type of COX? Based on this question, NSAIDs has been classified as Non-selective COX inhibitors, preferential COX-2 inhibitors, selective COX-2 inhibitors and analgesic antipyretic with poor anti-inflammatory action. Let's see what all the drugs come under what classes. Firstly, we have non-selective COX inhibitors and they generally inhibit COX-1 and COX-2. The drugs of this class are salicylate, propionic acid derivatives, phenamate, acetic acid derivatives, pyrazolone derivatives and enolic acid derivatives. I'll give you some funny mnemonics by which I used to remember it. SPF ape is a mnemonic here and imagine a ape applying sunscreen with SPF 50 all over it non-selectively and you will get it. Aspirin belongs to salicylates. Ibuprofen, naproxen, ketoprofen and flurbiprofen comes under propionic acid derivatives. Mephenomic acid comes under phenamate group of drugs. Ketorolac, indomethacin and nabumetone are all acetic acid derivatives. Phenylbutazone, oxyphenbutazone and propifenazone are pyrazolone derivatives. Peroxicam and tenoxicam are enolic acid derivatives. Now we have preferential COX-2 inhibitors. These drugs are 
meloxicam, aciclofenac, diclofenac, etodolac, and nemocilide. Made in is the mnemonic here. Imagine before buying a product, we give preference to their make, right? So we'll check whether it's made in which country. So we'll give preference to the made in here. So preferential COX-2 inhibitors has a mnemonic made in, right? So what's better here than the previous one? In non-selective COX inhibitors, gastro protection may be compromised because it inhibits COX-1 also, which is concerned with gastro protection. But preferential COX-2 inhibitors inhibit COX-2 more preferentially and therefore it has got less gastric side effects. Moving on to selective COX-2 inhibitors. Paricoxib, itoricoxib and selicoxib are drugs under this class. And the mnemonic is PEC, which stands for Pondicherry Engineering College. Okay, imagine selecting PEC College. So PEC stands for paricoxib, itoricoxib and selicoxib. Right? I hope this mnemonic helped you all to memorize these names better. And this group of drugs has got very minimal or no gastric side effects as they are not involved in COX-1 inhibition. And the final class of drug is analgesics and antipyretics with poor anti-inflammatory action. And the name itself is self-explanatory. They are paraminophenol derivative like paracetamol and benzoxazosin derivative like nifopam. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair for more. Thanks for watching.